for a portfolio of efforts, all software related, on behalf of Telstra. We formed the group in August of 2014, so it's a relatively new group. Um, we have three strategic charters, if you will. Uh, the first and, and probably the, the um, most significant in terms of prioritization is around identifying and establishing new growth businesses for Telstra um, that all have a set of common characteristics and dimensions. Uh, for example, we look at new businesses that are low capital intense to establish, meaning their software-based business model as opposed to fixed asset or hardware-based business models. They're global in nature. Um, they're in areas where there is some level of macroeconomic uh, disruption occurring. Uh, but there are areas also of adjacency. The next strategic uh, envelope that we focus on is around ecosystem investments. Um, if you want to be in the software business, it is a very talent-based business. So ultimately, you have to make sure you have sustainable sources of long-term talent um, to feed those businesses. And this six ways into our third strategic pillar is around building capabilities and competencies. Because not only do we believe that these new business models represent growth for Telstra in the future, we also uh, believe that those business models, those talent pools, also need to become part of our DNA within our core businesses over time. And so having an ecosystem influence is very important, as well as focusing on competencies and capabilities that aren't necessarily associated with the business today. They're more enablement features um, for our core business today. My personal view is that this is very much a team award, and so I, I, I prefer to celebrate it in that regard, uh, because it does represent the cumulative efforts of not just direct team members um, from my perspective, but also a set of sponsorship and stakeholder and operational ownership across Telstra, across our CIO organization, our CTO organization, the rest of our operational organizations, along with our businesses that that have started viewing APIs not just as a technology component or a budgetary line item, that's a cost item for our business, but much more of an enabler um, and a potential new channel that can drive revenue for our business. So, you know, we launched our API platform officially in June, and we have a variety of APIs um, out there. Today, they're, they're traditionally what you think of in terms of location-based APIs. We do have a variety of different types of APIs that we look at for security and other measures in and around our network. So I would say our traditional usage of APIs to date has been um, what you would expect from a telecommunications provider. What's probably more interesting, though, is, is how we prioritize what APIs to put up. You know, it is very much every API that we choose to stand up is, is one that we model after a business case, where there has to be a return on investment for, for standing it up. It's not something we do just for the fun of it. We may actually choose to open up APIs that aren't necessarily monetizable, but they are driving um, adoption of our network in certain areas. We also will choose to open up a APIs where there's an indirect uh, return on investment, meaning um, our cost to serve is actually dramatically improved by going with the standardized API, which has um, also been a lot of our, our initial efforts have been more about internal deployments and how do we actually stand up APIs so we can simply do more faster across our business. Um, going forward, you know, we have a framework put in place that as the needs of the businesses change, that we have the ability for APIs to kind of be a pivot point and a central um, part of those business cases so that it represents the channel on how you stand up new services um, and it can drive a return as it, as it relates to bringing those new services to bear. So, you know, when we launched the program, and it's still very early days for us, so I, I wouldn't um, claim that, that we have a successful footprint. We're actually evolving our metrics as adoption of the platform grows. So when we first started out, we, we you know, within our first 30 days, we had more than 3,000 developers on the platform and we processed more than a million transactions. We've grown well beyond that now that we've been running the platform uh, about four or five months to date. You know, so we're, we're well over, I think our latest count last month was over 7,000 developers. Um, and we started looking how many of those developers are active. So the fact that we have um, many of those several thousand active is actually becoming more important than just the sheer registrations, if you will. 
I think uh, we're kind of moving away from the number of transactions process too because we're now at several million uh, a month. The, the reality is, is what we want to understand is what's the revenue um, being pushed through the APIs that we have stood up today. The discussion was much more about do you build or do you buy? And to me that was a counter a counterintuitive kind of approach to this because quite frankly not having not having any agenda in either one of those I didn't actually care I didn't care if we built or bought I thought the more important question to be answered up front is why would you expose an API in the first place and so that that represents a great sort of shift in how in a lens and how you should view the challenges across your business today as to how you think about it and we Telstra have made that adjustment we Telstra um, have have understood that the, that is much more the world we're playing in, and we need tools and we need capabilities that are at global scale. Right? It's no longer just about supporting um, our traditional infrastructure. It's about creating both growth and value for our shareholders, which means we have to do more, more and more places, right, and faster. The first reason why we we chose Apogee and why we think Apogee is a great partner is. Um, one of the things that's very important to note about Telstra is Telstra, uh, because it is the company that it is, it is a premier telecommunications uh, and carriage service provider with roots in Australia. You know, we have a very, very um, high integrity brand. And our customers associate uh, the fact that Telstra with someone they can trust and someone that delivers a high quality of service. That's hugely important for us. And I would offer, even you know, having worked and grown up in the United States and having familiarity with our privacy and compliance and regulatory laws, when we were looking for partners and when we look for partners in Australia, we have even stricter compliance and regulatory laws there. And Telstra is it's hugely important to them that they maintain the integrity with their customer, with their customer's data, and with that trusted relationship at all times. It's a huge part of our brand. So with that, you know, we had a pretty specific set of requirements that we had to um, work with all of our partners on to make sure that they can adhere to that same high quality of service um, and integrity that, that we promote and support. You know, Apogee was one of the few API vendors um, when we originally were assessing uh, the landscape that could come to the table and offer that. So it is a lot about the enterprise class and scale, but it's also doing it in a trusted, uh, way with integrity around the data and the customer relationships that you're driving uh, through through those platforms. That was a huge uh, thing for us in terms of why we chose Apogee. I think as we get into Apogee, you know, the things that we've been and, and just kind of proving all of our thoughts around the strategy of how you do more faster, you know, it was it was great for us at Telstra, like most big companies. You know, when you talk about delivery, you tend to measure things in, in particularly large technology initiatives in terms of years, not months or weeks, in terms of your milestones. When we started our API initiative, you know, from what I would call ground zero, where we had nothing to actually selecting a platform and going into public beta, was about four months. And that first day that we went live on our public beta, the, we had an internal metric around time to hello world. So the time it took a developer to come in, register on our site, and create their first app, you know, we wanted that to be less than 30 minutes. And our very first user you know, was able to do that. I don't remember the exact number, so I think it was maybe 27 minutes. Um, but it was less than 30 minutes. And that was huge for us. I mean, to go from nothing to an actual beta, and a beta that could show that immediate value in terms of time to market, was, was just phenomenal for us. And I think that represents a lot of what, what we believe is important about Apogee as a partner and what we believe is the value Apogee can bring to the table. It, it is very much aligned with our vision of doing more faster and doing it in a highly trusted and high integrity way. <laughs> well, I love APIs because I think APIs represent um, the new ways to monetize in our new digital world. It's pretty much that simple. Um, APIs to me, if, if I think back um, 20, 25 years ago when companies started creating websites and e-commerce engines and they were a novelty at that point in time and people are like, why? And then you fast forward today and you look at the business models of Amazon and Jack.com 
and Alibaba. I mean, it is fascinating how that world has become mainstream and one of the primary growth drivers um, of, of not just the retail industry, but most industries uh, across the globe. APIs to me is, is that important. I think that becomes a new channel um, that is going to drive as much volume, uh, if not the majority of the volume uh, of value across most of the companies in the globe. So uh, I think APIs, it's not that I heart APIs, I think APIs is the heart of what a lot of people um, are building and architecting.